Hey guys, Pokesick29 here. Welcome to episode number 36 of my bucket plugin coding tutorials. In this video, I'm going to teach you guys how to make NPCs or non player characters. Uh, if you've ever used the Citizens plugin to make NPCs, this will teach you how to make a plugin that will let you spawn your own NPCs. It is not as the plugin we're going to make is not as advanced as Citizens, but the API we're going to use is extremely advanced you can do so much with it we're going to be using an API called remote entities this will allow you to create NPCs as well as other mobs and control pretty much every aspect of them other than the way that they look as you can see you can create and customize entities um, change their speed and give them desires and behaviors this video is going to be very simple with just spawning, but um, you can also use this to set desires, like make the entities want to kill people or want to get food, and you can also um, set different behaviors. Um, this plugin does use NMS or native Minecraft server code, so um, you're going to need to make sure that you get an updated version. Uh, version 1.7 for 1.6.2 was released recently, so this does work, but uh, if and when 1.7 comes out, you will need to wait until a 1.7 update to remote entities comes out before you can use it with the new versions. So let's go ahead and download remote entities. Keep that. And once that's done, we're going to need to install it like a plugin. Uh, this is a this works as a plugin. It does not add any commands or listeners or anything noticeable. It's just a dependency that you need to work with, and it does need to be running on the server or else you cannot use it. So heading over to Eclipse, we will create a new Java project called NPC Spawn, and we will go ahead and create the package. NPC spawn and our new NPC spawn class. Uh, we then need to add to our build path. We need to add bucket and we also need to add from our plugins folder remote entities. And good. Now we have the usual extends Java plugin. And go ahead and import. Uh, so now what we're going to need to do is our public void on enable, and in here is where we're going to um, set up everything that we need. Now, we need a um, private, I believe it's an entity manager, I'm not, I'll check on that. Uh, yes, I believe it is. So we're going to need that. Then in our on enable, we're going to write manager equals remote entities dot create manager this it takes a plugin and so we gave it this as the plugin so now we have this manager uh, that represents uh, an instance of the entity manager class which will allow us to do all of the stuff that we need to do so to make this easy we're going to write a simple method that will spawn an NPC with a specified name at a specified location so our um, public void spawn NPC uh, string name location lock. Go ahead and import location. You can go ahead and say, I believe it is a remote entity um, context C equals manager dot create. Uh, hang on one second. Dot prepare entity, and you use remote entity type dot human dot as pushable. You can specify whether or not you want the NPC to be pushable. Let's say that we don't want it to be pushable. Um, or no, let's say that we do dot as stationary. Uh, let's say we don't want it to be stationary. Dot at location lock. It'll spawn there. And we also need to change. You can add action desires, behaviors, and features. Uh, you can set the health, uh, you know, movement desires. Uh, the name, we can go ahead and give it our name. 
uh, you can give it a pathfinding range, speed, and uh, we already have the type. So, um, basically, that is what you need to do. Uh, the desires and actions, um, I might get into in another video if you guys are really interested in that. It's really advanced and I'll need to look into it myself, but you can do all kinds of amazing things with NPCs using this library. So we now have this create entity context, which it's not remote entity context, it's create, and now we have this C variable. So we can go ahead and say remote entity re equals c dot create. This will then, and go ahead and import remote entity, this will then create our remote entity, which is a player with uh, an NPC with all of these um, stats, all this, all this information. So, now we have created it, and you can now call different method methods of remote entity. Um, you can have them look at things, move to places, teleport to places. And another cool thing that you can do is by using get bucket entity, it will return an instance of living entity, which will allow you to do all of the cool um, entity things, like um, get their location, give them potion effects, light them on fire damage them, you know, all the things that you can do with the living entity class, you can do with the uh, remote entity. So now we have our spawn NPC method that will spawn an NPC with the name at the location. So now we need to go ahead and make, uh, to test it, some trigger that will spawn the NPC. So how about, for this example, we're going to make a player join event, and when the player joins, it will spawn an NPC. And just to clear up any possible future confusion, um, calling this event, giving it the name and the location, will spawn an NPC with the name, and if I were to name it Pogosic29, it will give it the Pogosic29 skin. If I name it Notch, it will give it the Notch skin. At the location, it will spawn it. For this example, I'm using a player join event, but you can use this for a command, for any other kind of listener, uh, whatever you want. So, by using this method that you can call whenever you want, it'll clear up some confusion. So, when the player joins, the player joins, want to do um, spawn NPC of e dot get player dot uh, dot get name at e dot get player dot get location. And of course, we need to implement listener. And we need to say bucket dot get server dot get plugin manager dot red dot oh, import bucket dot register events this comma this and that should be good. Let's just Excuse me, go ahead and steal a plugin.yml, delete the command, and this will be called uh, npc spawn at me. npc spawn. NPC spawn. Um, spawn npcs. And there we go. So let's go ahead and export this as uh, npc spawn. Spelled it wrong. And we can go ahead to our um, bucket plugin coding tutorials testing server and uh, spawn. Make sure you're also running remote entities in your plugins. And let's go ahead and start up the server and it should work. And let's see what's wrong. I made a typo. NPC. Ah, yes. Alright, this should work. Let's see. Still didn't work. Me dot Pogus twenty nine. Oh yes. Yes. Because I uh spelled it wrong. Sorry about that. I just made a typo. But uh 
And there we go, I believe. Hang on a second. And yes, we're good. So now let's go ahead and fire up Minecraft. Um, I just noticed today that um, an update was added to the Minecraft launcher. Uh, it's still similar with the development console profile editor, whatever. Um, but they did change it. Now the it looks a little bit more like the old one. You know, you can have your different profiles and uh, whatever. I do like it better. It does also get rid of the uh, menu, the old interface, which it didn't do before, which is very helpful. Um, I do like it better. I still kind of like the other one better, uh, but it's not bad. So as you can see, I just joined, and this uh, NPC, sexy Pogo Sick 29, was spawned with the same skin. And as you can see, I can damage it. I can also push it around. And uh, so that was just basically a very basic introduction to creating an NPC. Um, you guys can go ahead and find plenty of ways to use this. And uh, if I get enough feedback, I will um, work on and make a video about how to do some more advanced stuff with remote entities, like giving it action desires and behaviors and uh, other things like that, and uh, you know, pathfinding and other cool things. Thanks so much for watching, guys. As always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn, and I will see you guys very soon. Bye.